We will now first take up the movement of eyeball. The eyeballs, that is the complete eye, is controlled or its movement is controlled by six muscles. So, if we draw this eyeball in the form of a circular structure, what we see is this pupil. This is the iris part. And just to differentiate it from other structures, let us draw these circular muscles. That is the sphincter and even the dilator muscles. And now let us make one bigger circle which is representing the sclerotic. That is the outermost layer of the eye. So this is the sclerotic. We have seen that sclerotic, it provides shape to the eyeball. At the same time, it provides the surface for the attachment of the muscles. So here we are talking of six muscles which control the movement of the eyeball. The muscle which is attached at the upper end. These muscles, they are called rectus muscles. And these rectus muscles in each eye are four in number. This is called superior rectus. Superior rectus. Similarly, there is a muscle which is attached at the lower part of the eyeball. This is inferior rectus muscle. Now, on the eyeball, there is a muscle which is on the inner side. Now, here we'll have to visualize a little bit. Our two eyeballs, the muscle which is attached at the upper end, superior rectus, which is on the lower side is inferior rectus. Now, the muscle which is towards the canthus, that is towards this inner side or towards the nose, this is known as internal rectus. For this eye, this would be internal rectus. And the muscle which is on the outer side will be called the external rectus. So for this eye, say if we are talking of this muscle as internal rectus muscle, so this muscle would become the external rectus. But for the other eye, it is going to be different. Suppose we just make one small structure. Here would be superior rectus, inferior rectus. Now this will become internal and this will become the external. So internal rectus muscle is towards the canthus. That is towards the inner side where the nictitating membrane is. That would be considered as the inner muscle or inner rectus. Now when superior rectus muscle contracts, the eyeball moves up. Inferior rectus muscle contracts, the eyeball goes down. Now, if we are talking about both the eyes and we are looking at one object, we have binocular vision. So, suppose I am going to look on one side, that is my left side. The eyeball is going, the eyeballs are going to move like this. So, for this, the external rectus of this, must, this eye should contract and internal of this one. If external, external contract, the eyeballs are going to move apart or away from each other. So when the eyeballs have to move like this, for this eye, external rectus and for this eye, internal rectus. If I look on this side, that is on my right side, the two eyes, for this eye, it's going to be the external rectus which contracts and for this eye, it is going to be the internal. So internal and external rectus muscles are helping in sideways movement of the eyeball. Superior, inferior for up and down movement. Now, these are four. There are two more muscles. They are called oblique muscles. Oblique muscles are two in number. One is superior oblique and the other is inferior oblique. Superior oblique is attached here and it goes like this. So, this is the superior oblique muscle and here is the inferior oblique muscle and they are all attached to sclerotic. So this is superior oblique 
And this one is inferior oblique muscle. Superior oblique muscle is responsible for the movement of eyeball downwards and inwards. And inferior oblique helps in movement of out, upwards and outwards. So these muscles are rotatory or help in rotation. Whereas these internal, external, sideways, superior, inferior rectus, up and down. These six muscles of each eye are controlled by three cranial nerves. Six muscles controlled by three cranial nerves. And these three cranial nerves are third, fourth and sixth cranial nerves. When we were talking about cranial nerves, we also talked about a short formula to remember the names of these nerves. The third cranial nerve, if you are able to recall that formula, we wrote it as three times O, T and T, A, F, A, G, V, S, H, a fag wish. So, we are talking of third cranial nerve. That means this one. This is oculomotor. The fourth cranial nerve is trochlear, which is also known as pathetic. So, this is our third. This is fourth. Fifth, we are not including here. And this is, oh sorry, this is the sixth one. That is abducens. So, there are three cranial nerves which regulate the six muscles of each eye and these muscles help in the movement of eyeball. This is another important thing in working of eye. Now the next is the power of accommodation. So accommodation is actually the ability of our eye to see objects at different distances by adjusting the focal length of the lens. So here we are talking of power of accommodation. Power of accommodation. This is the ability of the lens to adjust the focal length so that so that every time the image is formed on retina. Now when we see objects from distance or the objects which are closer, we are able to keep those objects in focus. So if there is a car which is coming from a distance, we are still seeing it. Our eye, our lens has focused that object which is at a farther distance. As it starts approaching us, we are still able to see it as a clear image. But every time, because the object is coming closer to our lens, the focal length is adjusted so that every time the sharp image is formed on the retina. This is the power of accommodation. And there is a structure which is known as accommodation apparatus. Accommodation apparatus of our eye comprises of two things, ciliary body and suspensory ligaments. Suspensory ligaments are also known as zonula of zin. Zonula of zin. This is just another name given to it. So now, these are two structures which are going to help in adjustment of the focal length of the lens so that every time the image is formed on retina. What is the role of ciliary body? We have seen ciliary bodies have two types of muscles. These muscles are called meridonial muscles. Meridonial and circular muscles. So, if the focus or the focus point of the, length is, of the lens is to be adjusted and if these muscles 
contract, what are they going to do? They're going to pull choroid, that is the second layer of our eye, closer, inwards. So the size of the eyeball will become smaller. If the eyeball becomes smaller, the retina is going to come a little closer. So the image can be formed on it. Function of suspensory ligament, when they contract or relax, they're going to pull the lens. Now here, if this is the suspensory ligament and the lens is suspended by these suspensory ligaments. If ligaments stretch or pull, then if they move, then the lens is going to become little thinner. The convexity is going to become little less. But if they relax, then it is going to become even wider. So we will draw two. If it is stretching, if the ligaments stretch, then the lens will come to this position. And because of it, its focus or focal length is going to change. But if they relax, that means they are just as it is. Then in that case, the lens is going to be a little more convex. Again, focus of this lens is going to change. So these are two structures which help in this accommodation so that every time the image is formed on retina. If there is any kind of problem in all these things or in the shape of the eyeball, then the image is not formed on retina and which we call the defects in the eye. Now in the next segment, we will take up various kinds of defects of eye and how they can be connected.